I'm delighted to say that Noddy Holder off of Slade, but you don't even need me to say that, is going to be answering our five questions about why he loves the West Midlands, how it's helped shape him. And of course, give us a little update as well about his current situation. Uh, We knew that he'd been poorly and uh, him and his family chose not to reveal that at the time back in 2020. But since, they've been very open about his cancer diagnosis and about how he's doing now as well, which is really, really well. So you got a treat over the next 20 minutes or so. Noddy Holder on Boston List. I started off by asking him what he is currently up to. Well, I'm not working on anything at the moment. I'm sort of semi-retired now. I had got some plans to go out on the road in October and November with this band I've been working with. They're uh, the Tom Seals band. They're a 10-piece boogie jazz band. They're a bit like Jules Holland, a young version of the Jules Holland band. They're all under 30. They haven't got a clue what I'm talking about half the time. (laughs) (laughs) But we have a two-hour show and it's really good. And we were going out in October, November. Uh, but he had some other shows booked in, uh, so we, we, we couldn't get the theatre dates, the dates we wanted. So we're holding that off till next year now. But are you really looking forward to being back out like that, performing like that and, and sort of on the well, road? Well, I did some shows last year with him uh, all over the place and uh, they were very successful. They all sold out. They went down a storm. And uh, I tell stories, some clean, some not so clean. And Tom and the band, they play a lot of music. They're an absolutely fabulous band. I sing a few tunes. And so it's all a good fun night out. It's very relaxed, a very sort of uh, audience participation sort of show. Because I was ill for a few years, I hadn't really had much public contact. And I thought because I've come round and I'm still standing, I thought I'd better go out and show my face again. So that's (laughs) what I did. And people are very, very pleased to see you. Um, What's it like being a sort of sort of mixing the music with being a bit of a raconteur? Because I know you've always been one of those and you've always had a reputation for that, but is it, is the balance a bit more, a bit more story and a bit less music or how, how is it working for you? Yeah, you're probably right there. Back in the day, uh, even with Slade, I used to, a chatter between songs but now as you say the balance is a little bit different because i've got a heritage to draw upon now with stories not just they're not just slide stories most of the stories i do in the show are of stuff that's happened to me since slade but uh, the public seem to like that insight to what your life's about you know your real life's about we do do a lot of music as well. It's about a 50-50 balance. And, and I do enjoy it. I enjoy the relaxation of the show. There's no pressure on me. I just have to turn up and tell my stories and sing a few songs. All the uh, actual technical side of things, the sound checks and all that, the band do. So, you know, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I had 30 years on the road uh, of actually you know, day in, day out, doing the same sort of thing. You know, you're on aeroplanes or or on tour buses and you're in dressing rooms and you're in hotel rooms. The best part of the day was the two hours on stage, but there was a lot of stuff around it. Now, there's a lot less pressure on me to go through all the technical side of things, you know, which is great for me. I mean, I'm getting on a bit now. I'm 78, so... I like I like to take it easy. <laughs> what story gets the biggest reaction, or what? What? Well, one that you can repeat on the radio. <laughs> what's What's a popular <laughs> popular anecdote? Well, the one, probably the one once always gets a good reaction because I invite questions from the audience. You know, at, at the half time, they sift through questions from the audience. One I particularly like, which we do keep in quite often, is um, Susie Quattro. Did you? <laughs> which, I always, which I always found funny, and the audience loved that one. <laughs> uh, and the answer is no, 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 no. I'm no, not let's, telling you the l- answer. Let's is. not go down. No, 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 no. Better um, not go down that route. No. Better not go down that route. How has the last few years changed you? Is it a bit of a big question to ask? But I know you're doing really well now, health wise, and I've spoken to to your other half on this show. You know, this year a couple of times. 
How do you feel it's changed you as a as a person, but as a, a sort of performer as well? Well, it's certainly changed me as a performer. I mean, my breathing's not so solid as it used to be back in the day, you know, because of the type of cancer that I had. But I don't think it's changed me as a person, really. I, I took it head on, really. I mean, I don't know whether Susan ever told you. I sort of accepted it that I'd had a great life and Originally, the diagnosis was that I they gave me six months to live, which is hard to take, obviously. But I think it's harder for the family. You know, that's the hardest part is really how they have to come to terms with it as much as myself. I was quite positive all along the way about it. I thought what will be will be. I did as I was told by my consultant. I did my best. And luckily for me, I put on a, a trial thing of, of, of a trial of chemotherapy that they were trying out up at the Christie in Manchester and they'd had uh, some success with it uh, over the last 12 months and uh, but they'd never actually tried it on anybody over 60 years old. I was 72 at the time and he said would do, do you want to try it because if we get some reaction to it it's good for the research and I said well what what choice have I got really? Six months or I try this trial and I tried it and uh, touch wood at the moment I'm on a level playing field. They never tell you you're cured, you're never cured but I am on a level playing field and back to normal doing things I would normally be doing so that's, that's great really. But I suppose you get a different perspective on life obviously. I was always a bit happy-go-lucky, but I've been like that all my life. What will be, will be. And I suppose you do finally realise that you're getting older. Well, we are all so pleased to hear that you're you're doing really well. And I know that, you know, you've spoken about the decision not to go public with that diagnosis at first. Has it been yeah. strange then, obviously, deciding to talk about it, but later on... And people saying thank you so much and people talking about their own experiences. Uh, has that been a bit of a gift as well to share it? Absolutely. Uh, we didn't come, go public, first of all, because I really I didn't want media attention or anything like that. I wanted to face it head on in my own way, not have to answer questions about it. Because I didn't know what the ultimate result would be, really. But since I did come out in public, it has helped a lot of people. So many people have been in touch saying they've had the same thing, how did I cope, what was my treatment sort of thing. And I can only give them my side of the story. The treatment I had is not right for everybody, I have to stress that. It was a targeted treatment that went to work for me. It doesn't work for everybody, but it's good to share how to handle things. That's really the thing to do, is, is to share how to handle uh, when you get that news, because People handle it in all sorts of different ways. The only real main thing I can say to people is you have to stay positive. My consultant told me the big part of the success that I had with the treatment was my mental attitude. You have to think positive and that you have to think, well, it's going to work, it's going to work. It's the only way to look at it, really. You know, you've, you've got to have a positive attitude. And he told me, that was a big part of A, why he gave me the treatment at my age and B, that I kept that up all the way through my treatment, that I kept that attitude all the time. And he said it's uh, as stress-free as you can possibly be in that situation. But that's the that's the way you, I coped and that's the only advice I can give to people really because every case and every person is different. Noddy, let's get on to our Boston List questions. Noddy Holder, <laughs> the legend on our Boston List today. Question number one, what part yeah. of the West Midlands do you call home? Or did you? Or both? Well, I did call home Walsall in the West Midlands, in the black country, of course. That's where I was born and brought up. When I go visiting there, which is not so often these days, I may go back a couple of times a year to see some of my old mates that are still alive. I still say, oh, I'm going home. In my head, I still call Warsaw my home. And I've still got a, a very, very soft spot for Warsaw, even though it's changed a lot since, since I lived there. Uh, way back in the day, I'm actually a freeman of Warsaw. I was made a freeman a few years ago. I was the first person in the arts 
to be made a freeman in 150 years. Uh, usually wow. it's politicians or military men or people like that. The last person from the arts that was made a freeman was Jerome K. Jerome, who wrote Three Men in a Boat. He was born in Warsaw. I and did not know great. that. Ah, uh, yes, that's true. And uh, I went to the obviously the big council buildings to accept my freeman. All the council people were there, and you know there was a lot of uh, audience there as well in the town hall. You know, people were making speeches about people who knew me in my misspent youth, and it was quite funny. But I said, well, what do I, what do I get as a as a freeman of Warsaw? And it was quite funny actually. They uh, well, uh, a which is a probably a normal one with freeman is I can herd sheep through the town, <laughs> uh, which I don't know whether that's going to come in useful or not. It may do, you never know. I can carry a rifle through the town as long as a bayonet is fitted. Right. <laughs> I can have a free drink in any hostelry, any pub in the town. Oh, now you're talking. Allowed. And the one that capped it all, I can have my pick of fair maidens in the town. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, I mean... So every, every cloud has a silver lining. Every cloud has a silver <laughs> lining. Wow, Freeman of Warsaw, I love it. I did go back there. One of the shows I did last <laughs> year with the band was at Warsaw Arena. I didn't know Warsaw had gone to Arena, but one of the shows was booked into Warsaw Arena. And as I said to you before, the uh, uh, the show is two hours long. And, and for that particular show, my hometown show, I changed the format of, of my side of the show. For the first hour, I just told stories about Warsaw <laughs> and me growing up in Warsaw, which was very funny to some of the audience there that uh, could relate to some of the landmarks that I'd been talking about in the town and school days, of course, which, uh, you know, I still, I had a great school days. I loved it. Oh, you know what? That's great. A bespoke gig with all the stories is amazing. For yeah, when yeah. you when you love when you love where you're from, which you do, I know. Um, question yeah. number two it leads nicely onto question number two for Noddy Holder. You've got a day that's completely free. You're in you the, the retired bit of your semi-retired, and you can do anything yeah. you want. But it's in Birmingham and the Black Country and the surrounding areas, and you've got a free day. What are you going to do with it? I've always loved going out in Birmingham. I mean, I love a good curry in the Midlands. I mean, obviously, the Balti Triangle was big for me back in my day when I lived in the Midlands. There's a couple of great Indian restaurants still in Warsaw where I go with my mate. There's actually a, one of my favourite Italian restaurants in Wolverhampton I still visit quite regularly. You can name actually, check I if you want. The Italian in, in Wolverhampton is called Fiume. So I go there and I, co- I often go there with uh, Dave Hill, my old uh, sparring partner in Slade, the guitar player in Slade. Uh, uh, you know, we don't see one another very often because we, you know, we've not worked together for a long time. But he's one of the guys in, in Slade... Uh, that I have built bridges with over the years, you know, because it's well known, I think it's in the public domain that we fell out, you know, in various forms over the years, which happens in rock and roll bands. But me and Dave have built bridges. We we could always pick up the phone to one another, even though we had disagreements over a lot of things over the years. I think we thought we'd both sort of in the same mindset now that uh, it's too old to carry on the, you know, having feuds, daft feuds about absolutely nothing at all, really. So we do go out to lunch, uh, me and Dave and our wives, and it's quite funny and reminiscent. I mean, Dave's still as mad as a box of frogs, as he always was. <laughs> uh, so we do, we do have some laughs. Uh, but we, this is perfect. A long, long lunch uh, with your former yeah. bandmate and, yeah, yeah. and your other And halves. I do like the theatre in, I do like the theatre as well. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a patron of the Alex in Birmingham, so I go to the Alex uh, quite often, you know, when I'm in the Midlands. That sort of thing, you know, regular regular things like, but I do love eating out. And, and Brom, I mean, we've got, you've got um, four Michelin star restaurants in Birmingham, you know. It's, it's quite a good foodie scene, Birmingham. It really is. I love that idea because that's kind of what everyone wants to do on the day off, really, isn't it? Question number three for Noddy Holder. Dying to know what you're going to say to this. You can pick one West Midlands artist, band, soloist, whatever, singing one yeah. song. What okay. are you picking and why? Oh, dear. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick uh, 
who I think is a very underrated artist, actually, is Roy Wood. He's had several very successful bands over the years. I knew him before he was a hit maker. You know, I knew him in the bands he was with uh, before he formed The Move, which was his first hit band. And I'm going to pick one of the Move songs that Roy wrote and produced. It's Blackberry Way. So that's the one I'd probably pick. I still see Roy now and again to this day. I still go out with Roy for lunch now and again, up in the Peak District, over where he lives now. Uh, and uh, we've always stayed mates. And, of course, his his Christmas record came out the very same year <laughs> as our Christmas record did. So, you know, we have an affinity there. But I've known Roy for probably well over 60 years well over 60 years so and why uh, this why this song noddy why blackberry way because it, i think it's a good example of a commercial pop song that roy is always so great at writing he is such an incredible musician and i don't think he gets the recognition that he deserves people think he's he's just like this weird character that dresses up in wizard and, and and acts like that but if you look at his back catalog though the amount of hits he had both with the move he formed with jeff lynn elo he had hits with elo and then he formed wizard and had a lot of hits with wizard all great hit singles that, it, that he's written over Amazing. the years on to question number four now. What thing about the West Midlands annoys you the most? What annoys me is what people think of the Midlands. People always say, oh, you don't come from there, do you? And uh, and I say, well, have you ever been to Birmingham or the Midlands? Have you ever been there? And they say, no. I said, well, how the hell do you know what it's like? We've got great art scene. We've got great restaurants. The people are great. Why on earth do you slag it off? I hate it when a commercial or anything in a drama is portrayed and you've got the black country accent or the Birmingham accent and they always portray it with somebody who's thick. You know, it, it, it get, really gets my goat. Do you know what? It's been said before, it is a very valid answer, um, but it brings us on to the last question, actually, because this is your chance to rectify that. You've travelled the okay. world in your career. Yeah. You still do. You, you meet people all the time. You're talking to someone who doesn't know the West Midlands. They've never been. Maybe they've got a negative connotation. What What are you telling yeah. them about it? What's your pitch to them? Well, that's what I tell them. I tell them that, uh, you know, you've got to go there. You've got to visit there. You've got to experience it. And the, bi the biggest plus that the Midlands has got in its favour is the people. I've always said it, and I've plugged this all around the world since the year dot, that it's the people. You get the sense of humour. You get the warmth from the people that you don't get in many cities around the world. And no matter where you are, if you're in a pub in the Midlands, within five minutes, somebody's chatting to you and you're giving each other your life story. You know? <laughs> it's great. And that's what I love about it. Um, brilliant. And I love coming back to the Midlands because I hear the accent. You know, I've still got the accent, uh, but I hear the real broad accent when I go in the shop. You know, I'm going to buy a newspaper or something and they say, all right, Noddy, how you doing? <laughs> you know, it, it just strikes a chord with me, brings a tear to me eye that I miss it so much because I don't get back that often. Ah, uh, it's beautiful to talk to you, Noddy. I'm going to finish off just by saying we are on the run up to Christmas. Every year at this time, are you thinking, oh, God, <laughs> or are you like no, loving the fact that you are going to be everywhere again? Forever in yeah. perpetuity is just, I, I think, it, is it special or does it ever get on your nerves? I'm proud of it, yeah, I'm proud of it. I never thought 51 years ago when that record was released and written, I never thought that it would still be going strong. So it's it's great. I mean, I love it, I love it. And the bank manager loves it, loves it too. <laughs> I bet he or she does. Uh, Noddy Holder, our Boston List guest, how brilliant was that? If